The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. The following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dish wipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, please turn off your radio because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. <laughs> Dead Zone WDZRDV Worldwide. Welcome to the Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. Radio host. He's been so busy, he hasn't had time to do anything. Plus, he's a singer and songwriter. Are you kidding me? You guys stick around, stay tuned. You're going to love this show tonight. Hey, this is Michelle. Join me Sundays at 8 o'clock Eastern for paranormal news and events. Paranormal news. <laughs> All right, so for paranormal events here, from ParanormalNewsInsider.com. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's called Paranormal News Insider. It's ParanewsInsider.com is the website. So they have a, a list of all kinds of stuff here you can go check out for yourself. I'm just going to go over some of the stuff here that's listed for ghost conferences and conventions in 2020. There's the Dead of Winter Festival. That's on February 8th, 2020 in Alton, Illinois. Rochester Winter Parafest 2020. That's February 29th through March 1st. Rochester, New York. There's the Twisted Waters Cruise. March 13th through the 16th, 2020. Sailing from Port Canaveral, Florida. The Haunted Heights Paranormal Convention. May 8th and 9th. Hewton Lake Heights in Michigan. There's a Gift of Light Expo that's March 14th and the 15th in Columbus, Ohio. Phenomenology 2020 is March 26th through the 29th in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oregon Ghost Conference, March 27th through the 29th in Seaside, Oregon. Uh, SWF Paranormal and UFO Convention, March 28th. And that is, oh, I'm sorry, that's actually, that says 2019, but I have a feeling that's a typo. Uh, it should be March 28th of 2020 in Fort Myers, Florida. The New England Parafest, April 3rd through the 5th in Kittery, Maine. It says for Friday and Saturday. And Stratham, New Hampshire on Sunday. Gift of Light Expo is April 18th and the 19th in Cleveland, Ohio. The Midwest Parafest, April 25th in Toledo, Ohio. The Bayou City Paranormal Symposium, April 25th and 26th in Pasadena, Texas. There's the Virginia City Paracon, May 1st through 3rd in Virginia City, Nevada. Like I said, you can go to the website, and it goes on and on. There are a lot of events coming up this next year. So go to paranewsinsider.com and check it out for yourself. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great week. This is Keith Age. And you're listening to The Dead Zone. Oh, 
all radio stations in town were palm trees, we'd be the one with the biggest coconuts. Now, here are the one, the only, Dead Zone. Dead Zone. Hey, welcome back to the Dead Zone. This is Lee, and on the phone we have Sean Austin. This guy is great. This guy, has he's the team leader of Ghost Loop, and you have a travel channel show too, right? Yes. Yes, you do. And you're also an author. Correct. That's what I'm understanding, yeah. And and so much more. Is is that still on the Travel Channel, by the way? We just aired our last episode uh, this past weekend. Just this past weekend. I I, I don't get to watch TV very much. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, Don't worry. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, Well, uh, we did eight episodes. We traveled around the country um, with the uh, chance of trying to help families dealing with um, some serious hauntings in their homes. Um, The Ghost Loop of Activity, which is a concept that was made, um, basically explains that spirits, ghosts, um, are manifesting similar in activity and characteristic wise, and they're constantly showing themselves in a certain way. And that's what we try to figure out and to uncover what the intention of the spirits are leading us to a trigger environment, which is an emotionally charged environment, um, where it would actually lead to us getting and extracting more information from the spirits and getting down to their level so we can ultimately figure out what we need to do, um, about the, um, situation when it comes to the overall paranormal activity, um, whether or not we have to try and help the spirit to find peace um, or transition into light, or we have to force it off and displace it off the property if it's negative. Okay. Uh, great. Well, that sounds really cool. Uh, that's you've Eight seasons, you said, or six? There was eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. I'm sorry, not seasons. Um, how, how do you get permission to uh, do residential haunts like that. I mean, we we there's no way that we could do that, to go into a residential home and, and air it on TV. Do you sign a waiver? I'm sure you do. Or have them uh, I mean, I mean, absolutely. These people are desperate for help. I mean, they have to be willing to, you know, have their story be brought to a, a you know broader audience and be filmed. Absolutely, they have to be willing to do that, 100%. Okay. Obviously, some people are more sensitive about that. Um, that just depends on who you're coming in contact with, um, with what's going on in their home, and if they think it's too personal or they don't feel comfortable. That's so, solely up to the people. I mean, there's plenty of residentials that I, you know, go on that people don't feel comfortable, that sort of thing. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. this isn't just to be documented. We want to help people, whether it's on camera or not. Absolutely, um, you know, absolutely, that's yeah. Just, you know, the whole point of it. Absolutely, yeah. You're right. absolutely right, yeah. I mean, you used to have a radio show, too. Now I'm looking at your, uh, your inf- information here, um, the darker side. Do you still do that? No, I stopped doing it because I was becoming so busy doing a bunch of different things. Um, I had done it for about a year or two. Um, it was a great experience. I was able to bring on many great guests, learning mm-hmm. from different types of people that have had, you know, astounding paranormal experiences themselves. And uh, I think, you know, I think it's important to, you know, first of all, to be able to learn from each other because we all have different Absolutely. Um, diversified experiences um, in the paranormal world. Um, and it actually led me to meeting Ralph Sarchi, um, I brought him on my show, right. which actually led me to be, um, you know, one of his investigators and then leading to going on cases with him, the Demon Files, the pilot series that aired in Destination America, right. being mentored by him about demonology, leading me to this day, um, now being a religious demonologist. Right. Now, kind of go into that a little bit deeper. There's a lot of people out there that think that, uh, I won't mention a name, but everyone knows who we're talking about. We always do. Um, it's everything's always always comes back to it's a demon. Now, talk a little bit more about that. Do you really believe that? Well, what most things are demons. Yeah. No, no, no not no. at all. I mean, no. There's a lot of tricky human spirits that will say things like Satan and things like that will be satanic in nature, um, and there can be also even satanic like human spirits that were satanic. Um, in life, in, in the physical plane, but are still not, you know, fully demonic and not inhuman. They're not fallen angels. I mean, right. you know, if it's something truly demonic, there's certain characteristics that we would look for, that we would lean towards whether or not it would be that genuinely and legitimately. All right, it's my if opinion. If it's scratching on the walls or putrid smell like sulfur and rotting flesh or the type of activity, um, if there's huge physical objects being moved that even a human person couldn't even move, yeah. Um, is doing that sort of thing. I mean, there's just, you know, the mockery of the Holy Trinity. There's certain things that you look for, um, you know, on certain cases, but um, there are a little lower um, level minion type demonic spirits too. Um, but no, not every case is demonic. 
most of these things are human spirits. They can be tricky and malevolent in nature, but not demonic. Well, um, it, it, definitely, it, it, you know, it's, it's kind of our experience that uh, people are people, whether they're dead or alive. And they're going to be mm-hmm. who they are in the afterlife, just like they were when they were alive, right? They, 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 if they well, want to be... That if, they, if they haven't let go of the human life that they once lived, obviously the attitude, the personality of the individual yeah. is going to transition into this ghostly human um, earthbound spirit. And they're going to react. It because gonna, it, hasn't, yeah. it hasn't let go of the human life, and that's what, what happens to, I, I believe, what happens to a lot of these ghostly um, spirits is that they're, they're focused on the human side of at their life and not realizing that the core element is that our souls came here to live and experience in a physical body, a vessel, to have an opportunity to broaden and, um, you know, you know, high, have a higher vibrational frequency mm. of brighterness to our soul by learning the, you know, the mission that we're sent down to do with the possibilities of, you know, making a positive outcome while we live these lives. Right. Um, but that's the problem with a lot of these spirits is that they literally focus on as if we're humans as a core, and that's the complete opposite. And um, I think they don't realize is that once we transition into light, the memory, the knowledge of why we came down here and all the things that we had to endure, as bad as it can be, and all the little good parts, I mean, all of that is in the light. But that really comes down to, you know, taking that leap of faith um, and let go and let God so you can um, accept that light so ultimately you can find the path to peace and the knowledge from where we did genuinely originally come from. Right. So you you are evidently obviously you are a, re- a religious man. I'm Catholic and spiritual. I mean, okay. I am Catholic, but I do believe in uh, reincarnation. Okay. Um. So I mean, I don't judge anyone who has a different um, belief system than I. Right. Um. I, I do believe that. Um. Any person that can do good in this world, our souls could have landed in any physical body in the world. Right. Um, and you could have been you land your soul could have landed in an atheist family, but I mean, there's plenty of atheists out there oh, who yeah. probably do really great things and amazing things for our, their fellow man yeah. that are being the example of what God stands for, and that's unconditional love and forgiveness. And it all comes down to the golden rule, and that's really what stands out to me in the Bible. It's love others the way I'll be loved. That transcends every single religious belief that's out there ever that's ever been created by man. Right. And that's really what example of what God stands for, and I think that's the example we're supposed to live by. In each day that we're lucky to breathe oxygen on this planet. Absolutely, I agree with you 100. percent What I was trying to get at is before is uh, to put it to put everything in, just in a nutshell. If you were a dick in in life, you're going to be a dick in death, right? You're going to be the same person you were. You're going to come after people. You're going to irritate mm-hmm. people. You're going to bother people. Yeah, that's I believe that a, mm-hmm. above oh, yeah. above and beyond of everything. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. That is cool. Now, you are an author. Do you put any of this in your books? I'm sure you do, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I'm actually working on my second book um, as we speak as well. Okay, well, go ahead and plug it, man. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be probably months down the line, but my first book is called Shadow Chaser. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about my first step into my paranormal journey, a lot of experiences and places that I went to and things that lingered around me and the things that have um, changed me. Right, um, and we're going to we're gonna get to that and, uh, in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my second book is just a continuation of some of the crazy, crazy stuff that's happened to me that I felt um, inspired to make sure that I get this written down on paper and share with people. Um, I think it's really um, a real key element to having these experiences, share it with the world, because um, it possibly could help, whether it be one person or a thousand people or more, you're still making a difference. You're making spiritual awareness bombs go off in the planet and um it can make a difference even if you don't think it so it's just you know sharing that knowledge sharing those experiences any way that that we can as we're involved in this field absolutely right i agree with you again 100 percent. let's get back to what what you just said how did how did it all begin what started you on the paranormal field I'm, i'm sure you've been asked that a million times but you know i'm curious uh yeah absolutely um it was a friend of mine who um, I would consider my trigger into the paranormal. I, would, I was watching lots of paranormal documentaries. I loved horror movies as a kid. I was reading Stephen King books when I was in fourth grade. Um, you know, and at this one point in you know, my late 20s, um, I um, was waitering at a restaurant, and a buddy of mine, very big skeptic, I decided to take him to a local cemetery that was known to be haunted, 
had a lure of three women in white that would chase you out. Right. And I wanted him to have, <laughs> I, I wanted him to have an experience, really. <laughs> it wasn't great. about me. Yeah. I wanted to be like, yeah, because I mean, I watch this stuff. I believe it's real. Right. But in that process, I was in front of this little girl's grave, and I asked her a question if she was here. Her name was Jenny. Yeah. I thought I heard something with my own ears, and I had a flip phone. It was right before smartphones started. Right. And um, not until the next night, I listened back to my recordings, and the disembodied voices were coming through. Like, but that little girl's voice was the first one I listened to, and I just had full-on body chills. It and blew you it away, right? Exhilarated, terrified, yeah. but excited all at once. Right, it blew you away. Confirming that this shit's real. And it yeah. drew me out to find a buddy of mine to start going out further to investigating over and over again to find, you know, that next tier of experience to learn from it. And then just things started happening to me so quickly. I feel like I skipped a lot of years of experience. I feel like within the first two years, I mean, I had so many paranormal experiences if I was already doing it right. um, for, for a decade in those two years because, I mean, it just so much happened to me. And I was triggering spiritual abilities that were dormant with me, within me. Um, and I didn't realize all this stuff. It was just a whirlwind. I mean, the paranormal is like a meteor out of the sky that hit me yeah. out of nowhere. Right. And it has taken over. And now it's just like, you know, paranormal 24-7. I experience it every single day. Having me in abilities, I'm, I'm still learning about discernment and this gift from God and... You know, like, again, any way that I can use these experiences and knowledge that I can help any people on this planet or souls that come in contact with, um, that's what I'm here for. Right. So what you were saying is you were always into this to one to a certain degree, but until you listened yeah, to I that. Yeah, I was totally until, interested. Uh, I watched many documentaries about yeah. it. I was very fascinated, but I never thought in my mind, like, looking back, like, wow, why, why, why didn't I just go out and, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, just go to a cemetery? I just don't know. But then, like... Well, you can't anymore. Just, they won't let you anymore. Yeah. You, you get arrested for that. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, but what I was saying is um, you were kind of into it. You were, like, getting your feet wet. Then you heard your recording, and the doors just blew wide open. And oh, your, yeah. your mind opened up. And that's why I think, I, I, I'm assuming, you had so many now because you've opened up your mind and, and welcomed it, right? Oh, yeah, and I was so open to the possibilities of my experiences. I wasn't trying to, you know, shut them off, push them away, as if to rationalize every single thing yeah. that happened to me. I was completely open, and with that, I do believe that my experiences and, I, and my abilities that I had within me, and looking back now that I did, I, I did have... Um, you know, visions and dozing off and seeing people's faces that I never met before. And I remember wondering about it when I was younger. Um, you know, am I able to like make up in my imagination people's faces that I've never seen before? Like I was actually like, well, maybe, wonder about you know, it. maybe possibly. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're, we, we've all, we're, we're all ingrained to recognize a human face in anything. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest part of pareidolia right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, but you know, who knows? You know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but now with the abilities that I've had and how many spirits come to me that visit me and, and seeing like it's just it's visions of people. It's not, you know, pareidolia. It's something of visions. Like when I'm like you're in a meditative state, you're a subconscious state, you're most susceptible to the, the paranormal world. And the spirits know that. And that's why they gravitate towards us when we're sleeping, because it's the best chance for them to convey and telepathically project information yeah. and messages to us so they can get what they're thriving and desperately trying to get from us, whether it be just, you know, we've, we've, notoriety. Or, mm -hmm. We've got, we've got a lot of people that tell us stories like that too. I mean, and I kind of, I kind of lean towards some of those people that tell us these stories. It's sleep paralysis. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you, you just, you're, you're right there in between and you can't move. Yeah. Uh, you can't. I, I've had mm -hmm. it myself, you know, but you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a crazy world. I wish the other guys were here because they're they're more open minded than I am. I'm kind of the skeptic of the group. You know what I mean? I'm like mm -hmm. I I try to I try everything I can to debunk everything. Right. And sometimes I can't. Like for example, well, that's what like, we call the unexplained. <laughs> yeah, like you just said. I mean, I mean there there are certain things like that come to you. My wife, especially Michelle. I mean, oh my God, you know, God rest her soul, her mother just passed a couple of months ago. I mean, she's getting signs every day, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I see nothing. I mean, I might get a hint or two that, but I'm kind of thinking it's more along the lines of the power of suggestion now, 
You know what I mean? I, well, I can't help it. You know, like I said, it's all about your firsthand experience. I could tell you a gazillion ghost stories right now and tell you this and that happened to me. Right. And it's very easy for people that are very skeptical to be like a defense lawyer for rationality and say, wow, I found a loophole. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what this, I do. This, yeah. this, 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 and that, and that, and that. Yeah. Well, you know, like you said, some things that you have, you just can't explain. So exactly. for people like yourself that are like highly level types of skeptics, then you actually have to sit there and witness it yourself to Absolutely. prove it to yourself. Yes. Otherwise, you'll just sit there desperately trying to debunk everything and with everybody. And of course, you can come up with rational explanations yes. for any experience that anybody has without you being there. Yes. And that's the whole problem with it. Yes. Um, because, you know, we don't have explanations with the things that happen. And that's what drives us who are truly passionate about the paranormal field to go out there and do the actual research, to put the blood, sweat, and tears yes. into um, having these experiences, you know, going to these places and taking the risks that we do and, and, and trying to share that and try to have a deeper understanding with it, um, with the small gap of life that we have when we're on the physical plane. Right. Um, but that's really, you know, what it's all about for, you know, skeptics. It's firsthand experience. Yes. Um, and there are, there, there have been a few. There have been places that we have went that I, you know, I usually carry a, 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 a point-and-shoot camera with me, and I will feel something, and, I'll, and uh, the the moment I feel it, I turn around, snap, 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 at least three, right? And we've got photos that are just incredible, that they're insane. It's like, it, what am I looking at? And we've had, um, she doesn't like to call herself a psychic, but a medium, but tell us beforehand, we're going to see that, and, and we did. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 crazy. Yeah. It's 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 just crazy stuff. But I agree with you. 100%. I mean, that's that's what it's all about too for me too. Like I never thought I would actually have any sort of abilities myself. I do believe that we all have psychic abilities. Um, it's just a little bit more natural in some individuals than others. It's kind of like you know, I'm a musician and a singer too. I mean, that's my, that was my first passion before I even got involved in the paranormal. Right. And I took only three guitar lessons, and my ear became my best teacher. Absolutely, now, I played by ear too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else might have to take like you know two years of guitar lessons to be as natural as I was with me with songwriting and writing music. Right. But I think that's also the case when it comes to spiritual abilities. Like again, we're spiritual beings living in a human body vessel, so we we are that as a core. It's there. But some people are just meant to not be, um, you know, having those talents naturally. Where it'd be a little bit tougher for you to train yourself, because I really do believe that our spiritual abilities are a spiritual muscle, and you have to develop it, work it out, and um, you know, figure it out and harness it as you experience more. And you know, that's what I think about when I go to some of these haunted locations. It's a spiritual gym. Right. I'm flexing my spiritual muscles, and I'm learning. The more things that I tap into, the more things that I feel. I'm um, an experience. Um, I'm learning from it. Right. I'm honing in on like having an understanding of what's triggering what in my body, and then to actually be able to correlate it with some of the scientific equipment that we use, and to back it up with some of the experiences, gives gets more validity to every what everyone's doing as a whole on a case, and and as well as the, the, the clients, the families that we're trying to help to bring validity yeah. to what they're claiming they're experiencing. Right. Now a throwback. Um, we had talked about this before. Um, I, at the gravesite, you obviously used a um, digital digital recorder, right? Just on my phone. Just on your phone. Okay, just on your phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my question was going to be, what, if any, other than your own mind, is your go-to piece of equipment when you go do these investigations? Well, I do love the straight-up communication that we get from spirits. Now, again, I, I'd i have to say, you know, I love myself being my own piece of equipment. But to have these right. other devices that say things, that back up feelings and, and but do you do you really do you really buy into it? I mean, other than a, a blank digital recorder, fine, I get that, okay. But um, SP7s, SP11s, and all that other thing. All oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Right. I know people are skeptical about SB7, but it's the same concept as EVPs, but obviously some people will be like, oh, okay, it's the radio station, now it's the audio version of Paradilia. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like, I've had just undeniable results with it. I, I also mean, use but the plus, the box. Plus, you're, you're, pulling, you're, you're, either, you're either pulling off of radio waves that are everywhere or pulling, off, pulling out of a pre-programmed database on, on most of these pieces, which is, I can't get past that. You know what I mean? Well, you should also not be able to get past the fact that spirits can manipulate anything that's electrical. I mean, people's TVs... Oh, that's true. That's true, oh, yeah. People get text messages from loved ones that 
are, are yeah. dead and like, you know, all this intelligible, you know, types of things that they do when it comes to electrical devices. So obviously right. you're looking from one side of the fence of the spectrum for your belief system to right. discount it completely. Right. But when you talk about EVPs and how they actually occur, right. you know, obviously you have to learn how to differentiate what's the radio and what you're getting. Right. Um, you know, uh, you know, EVPs happen because of frequencies. Um, spirits speak on a frequency we typically can't hear with their audible ears. That's yeah. why we have to record audio and listen back because the devices can actually tap into those frequencies and we can figure out if that's a disembodied voice intelligibly um, communicating with us. Now the spirit box just doing it in real time by hitting the frequencies. Um, you know, that's something that you got to learn about. I mean, voices hitting over like eight stations in a full sentence. Yeah, a full, know, intelligently yeah. Intelligently yeah, responding absolutely. to your yeah. question that's undeniable is just like... <laughs> Yes. There's no question to me. Yes, we, we yeah we have we've had a little bit of luck with uh, SB7, very little. I mean, but most to be honest with you, uh, the most responses that we've gotten using any piece of equipment is is the OK two meter, and Michelle, it's like they're drawn to her. I mean, she, they will talk to her when they won't talk to me. They won't talk to Dustin. They won't talk to anyone. Well, you know, again, um, people who are skeptical, I believe that spirits can actually see our aura. So your uh, your personality, your emotional state is giving off a certain type of color. Mm -hmm. Now, you're very skeptical. They know they, they have a very tough time and a tough, um, you know, <laughs> chance to actually communicate with you and to, to be getting some sort of reciprocation from you by communicating to you because you're trying to discount their presence. Now, somebody else is open to them, they're going to be gravitating towards them. Right. This is why spirits go towards children. Yes. There is no, you know, rational perspective hammered into their minds yet. They're in an impressionable stage and right. spirits again, are and they dying have to go to these kids because they just yeah. came from the spirit realm. They know that they can actually um, communicate with them now. That's just like going back to me and my experiences when I first started. I wasn't trying to discount things I was experiencing, I was just accepting it like, holy crap. You know, I was wondering about it, but I wasn't like sitting there like, well, no, no, that can't be, no, that's not happening, no, that's definitely right. not happening, I'm just crazy. But back with the kids, the kids again you're talking about, that's, that's uh, once again, the open mind. I mean, there's a no, they haven't been jaded yet by society. Well, you're thinking from obviously a skeptical approach, but if they're giving some, well, it's depending on the situation. If the child is actually giving some sort of information that they couldn't have actually known or said something that a three-year-old would never be able to say, right? Um, you know, there's no freaking way, right? Um, you know, you're, you're saying that they're they're open-minded, nothing, but like, you know, I'll give you an instance. Like, I'm writing a story about a girl who was possessed and pregnant. Okay. And I experienced so many freaking crazy things. <laughs> okay. And I'll give you one example: is that one night um, she was on the phone with me. And, um, you know, her three-year-old um, was saying that the big bad wolf is here and he has the mark of the beast 666. Oh, wow. So the kids, the kids, um, you know, in the background, and I just, I had just read a, a bunch of books about demonology and, I, mm -hmm. and from what I read is that demonic entities are incapable of actually saying, I love Jesus. They're incapable. So I asked the mother to actually <laughs> ask her three-year-old, ask him, you know, you know, ask him if he, you know, the big bad wolf can actually say, I love Jesus. Yeah. So she asks him on the phone, and the kid starts howling like crazy. Really? She says, she says, oh, my God, he wants to get on the phone. I'm like, okay. Yeah. He gets on the phone with me, and he goes, you better watch out the big, bad wolf. He bites. And he says, he'll come into your sleep light in your bed tonight, yeah. bite off your penis, and spit it on your chest. And I woke really? up that night with a bite my, on my arm. Wow. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's just one little example of, like, coming from a three-year-old. I really don't think... Uh, an open yeah. mind could just come up with something like that and, right. and on the spot like that. No, no, you, I, I think you took it wrong. What I was, what I was trying to say, I think I, maybe you took it wrong. No, they, no, no. I'm just giving you an example. Just yeah. like you know, you you have to learn how to differentiate between a child who has an open mind thing. If yeah. a kid's just saying I have an imaginary friend, obviously it's like okay, that could be a bunch of different things. But right. if they're being very specific in information, that yeah. they're incapable of actually attaining as a child and being very aimed at some sort of situation or event, there's no way that they were capable of learning about it right. and conveying that in an adult manner, that right. would be something that would be very suspect to me leaning towards a spiritual experience. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and you're right. I agree with you. Yeah. But that just comes with, you know, going through and, and, and you know, it's not just like, okay, it's a child, you know, this and that. I mean, you, you got to go through a bunch of cases where, yeah, I mean, children, you, you got to listen to what they say. I mean, yeah. this is from having years investigating cases and 
learning the different circumstances that go on in some of these residential cases and families and we had you know there might be normal psychological issues people with abusive things and drugs and alcohol and people wanting attention there's so many different oh we get that all all the time we get that all the time there's people that of course you would you you wouldn't well i'm sure you would you would you you wouldn't believe though how many people call up and just just outlandish outrageous i mean it's we we have to turn people down but there was two there were two there were two that we did have that involved children and both of them were very young and they both had down syndrome Mm. and that i i didn't know what what to think because they a, a child with down syndrome has no imagination they have nothing but yet they come out and tell you this. This is this person's in this room. This person's in the corner over there, up on the ceiling. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I believe them. Yeah. I believe them. I well, right. And it's funny you actually bring that up because um, I'll give you another example too. It's something I experienced. I went to I think it was St Albans Sanitarium one weekend, and I came back to my job at the time. And my the office building, um, the first floor of the office building, they help mentally challenge people. Yes. And we have a cafeteria. When we go to eat lunch, some of them would come in and be like, you know, making strange noises and doing stuff like that. Now, I was really drained for the weekend. I investigated all weekend. Right. And I was sitting at this table uh, with about six of my coworkers. And this guy, this young guy, must have been like his 20s. Um, and he comes into the shop room, sits about 30 feet away from me. Yeah. I sit down at the table, and um, I don't know if, like, it was told to me or if I was just thinking about it, but, like, in my mind, I was like, wow, I really wonder, like, about these mentally challenged people, like, if they're, they're probably sensitive. It's, it's the same concept of saying we can't teach dogs or cats that ghosts are, real, uh, are not real. That's why they don't lose that natural ability, but because right. of the way that we actually were brought up, these things are not real, yes. but we lose a lot of our natural psychic abilities. But yeah. I mean, you think about someone who's mentally challenged, they're not capable of learning something on a deeper, deeper spiritual level like that. Right. And I thought to myself as I sat there at the table and I'm like, I just wonder if like, if the spirit like said my name to this, this person and they just started saying my name out loud. <laughs> so I sat there at my table and about 15 seconds later, I hear, now this guy was originally sitting there on the table with the chaperone going, sit on my lap, sit on my lap, in like a child's like voice. Yeah. And right after I thought about this, 15 seconds later, all of a sudden I hear, Sean. Oh. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Sean. Over and over. Sean. And my coworkers are looking at me like, dude, is that fucking kid saying your name and staring <laughs> right at me? Got a, got a, got a bleep there. Sean. Sorry. Sean, yeah. Sean, and then like my coworkers were terrified because right. they know I do all this paranormal stuff. Yeah, and the, the chaperones like taking the kids, like calm down, calm down. But he puts his arm up and he points right at me. He's like, "But that's Sean over there," and he had to escort this kid out of the um, cafeteria as he continuously went, "Sean." Sean right. and like my coworkers were terrified for you know they didn't want to be my friend or saying we can't be friends for <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but you know I'm just saying just another example now that was something that I had experienced now I'm telling you a story but I mean I had witnesses to that and like you know they were they were terrified there was you know there's nothing like having other people um, to witness something like that and really scratch their heads about them oh yeah it that gives it a, 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 a degree of validation yeah yeah yep. absolutely yeah very cool. Okay, we're just about out of time. I did want to ask you one more thing. Now, but before before we do that, um, anyone that wants to go check out Sean can uh, find him on Twitter.com, at Austin, right? Uh, Sean D. Austin at Twitter. Okay, YouTube.com. It's uh, Sean Austin's Music, mm-hmm. S-E-A-N-A-U-S-T-I-N-S, Music. Um, it's got... My music and also paranormal clips. I've been starting to add content on there. Okay, and you've got Instagram and Facebook as well. What kind of yeah. music do you play? Do you play metal music? We could have had one of your songs on tonight. <laughs> My music sounds like Pearl Jam meets Switchfoot meets Goo Goo Dolls. I did the best. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a new EP coming out um, actually in a month. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm really excited about. Well, that's cool. Maybe we can get you on. That. Yeah, we can play a couple of tracks if you want us to. It'd be okay. Yeah, and absolutely. You, that'd be that'd be great. Okay. Anyway, now, you've got one book out already. You're working on another book, and that book can be found at? 
Um, my book, if you want a signed book yes. and you live in the U.S., yes. just go to my website, seandaustin.com. Okay. Um, I, sell, I send out uh, mailed um, signed books or CDs. Um, and if you live outside the U.S., you can get off Amazon. Just type in Shadow Chaser and Sean Austin. Very cool. Very cool. Do you do come that you do do conventions, right? I mean, you do the circuit every now and again, right? At least uh, um, I've done a few events. I'm lining up a bunch of events right now. Um, I just confirmed I'm about to post, make a post about it. I'm doing an event in North Carolina, a haunted hotel. Okay. I'm posting on social media in the okay. next uh, few days. Um, I'm doing an event in Pennsylvania in the end of April. I'm doing an event May 9th that still has tickets because I just posted about a day ago at the Shanley Hotel okay. um, in New York. Um, really awesome haunted location, awesome owners, always uh, active place. If you're more interested about that, um, look on my social media Very cool. and go to Shanley Hotel's uh, website. Very cool. Okay. And there's lots more that we can talk about and that we could get to, but when, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, Sean, Austin, guys, go check his websites out. Go check out everything. More on this guy. And we appreciate you coming on. Absolutely, any fun. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Bye.
Hello, this is Christopher St. Booth, and you're listening to The Dead Zone. If you love to smoke, then you know there's no place left in America where you can light up a butt these days. That's why Carnival is proud to offer our new Smokers Cruise. You'll board our luxury liner and be off to... Yeah, who cares where you go? The point is, you'll be in international waters where you can smoke 24 hours a day for a full two weeks. <laughs> they let us smoke on the dance floor and all our meals, even in the pool. <laughs> I like all the uh, activities. Uh, smoke alongs, cigar races. <laughs> hey, I'm at a babe who smokes unfiltered luckies. Oh, what? The Smokers Cruise. <laughs> Sign up now for regular or menthol. Hey, it's not just a vacation. It's the lung bone. It's my friend. <laughs> <Pussy>. <laughs> What makes, what makes bad, bad kids, kids bad? bad? What, what makes, makes them do, do the things, things they do? Booze, babes, and bad guys.
he's the man. He's a myth. He's almost a mystery. He's an icon. The one, the only, Bob Damaris. Bob, how you doing this weekend? Doing great, guys. How about you? <laughs> we're doing wonderful. Hey, we're doing better than we were yesterday. Yeah, well, dragging that, ass that a little is, bit. You, you were one of the only people who had said that at a convention on a Sunday. Dead Zone WDZRDB. Worldwide. If you've enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends. This is the Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.